The company has decided to make a change. I've given 16 years of my life to this company. The rest of the higher-ups wanted you to have this. That should just about cover it. What the flick, everybody? Ben Mankiewicz, Christy Lemire, Associated Press, Ebert Presents at the Movies, Matt Atchity, Editor-in-Chief, Rotten Tomatoes. Will Ferrell, but not uh, the big sort of uh, goofy uh, Will Ferrell that uh, we've come to know and uh, love, unless you're my mother, in which case it's no and hate. She doesn't like Will Ferrell? Oh, no. Oh, I really? Don't care Why? For Will Ferrell. Oh, I don't know. It's the shenanigans and always with the four-letter <laughs> words. And, <laughs> I don't care for him. You kids and your rock and roll yeah. music. <laughs> right. um, so this is a very different kind of role for Will Ferrell and Everything Must Go. He's done some drama in the past with... Stranger Than Fiction. This is much darker, much deeper that he has to go for this role. Hi, uh, are you in there? If you are, can this happen another day? So are you getting rid of your old stuff? I got fired from my job and my wife left me. If I'm honest, I saw this coming a mile away. Thanks for warning me. Once you get rid of all that stuff, you're gonna feel great. One of the things I loved about this movie is that Will Ferrell at no point raises his voice. Yeah. And you see a different performance out of him than I think we've ever really seen. Mm -hmm. It's very subdued, it's very subtle, and I was really, found myself riveted. Mm -hmm. I went into this movie kind of tired, thinking, oh, you know, it's gonna be kind of standard indie festival piece, uh, I've seen those a million times. Mm -hmm. I, it's not what this movie is at all. Uh, you know, it, it went in directions I didn't expect it to go, and I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, it really rests on his performance, but I think he's great in this. Yeah, I think you, you look at a lot of actors, a lot of comic actors who do more dramatic performances. You look at like Adam Sandler and Punch Drunk Love or whatever, and there's so much pressure, so much expectation, like, huh, show us what you can do. What else can you do besides, you know, your, your George W. Bush impression or, or whatever it is? And there is, yeah, there's a lot more going on with him. If you look at his comedy, it often does come from like a weird and sad kind of place. So the fact that he right. can delve deeper and, and mine that further kind of makes sense in retrospect. Yeah, and, and the way he played the alcoholism and didn't go for the cliches of right. it and didn't go for the really obvious moments, I was really impressed with. And one of the things that I think the movie did really effectively is without, you know, kind of like we talked about in uh, Bridesmaids, without really telling you things, it makes you feel this emotion. You know, when he's looking to buy beer or when he's looking at taking a drink, you're really kind of afraid for him. Mm -hmm. Or at least I found I was yes, really, I was really worried about his character. You know, he, he has that moment where, you know, he can't buy beer or a couple moments where he can't buy beer and and you don't feel, it's it's not something to laugh at. It's, I, I kind of felt bad for him. Right, no, it gets alcoholism very right. Yeah. Like the, the shakes he has in the morning and like the desperation right. as the day goes on to find alcohol in any way he can. Right. Um, this is not the best product placement in the world for Pabst Blue Ribbon. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> the beer of they washed are, up alcoholics, right. yay. They, they are all over it though. Yeah, right. that, that it's, it's not like any random beer. It's like a gigantic mini he, fridge he on his yacht. He some PBR. I think that Will Ferrell does silent here extremely well. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of moments where, again, there's no speaking and he is uh, acting. You, they really sort of conveys his sort of pain, loneliness. This is a movie where almost every character in it is very, very lonely. Mm -hmm. uh, even the characters that connect with other people are somehow lonely, that already have connected. And it is, I think if there is a message here, and it's hard to get exactly what it is, but it's the value of that you have to have some connection with people, and that's how you obviously come out of your loneliness. That's how, that's where we find our sustenance. But there are moments when he's silent that I think he delivers his best stuff. You mentioned that one scene there where, uh, there are a couple of scenes where he's desperate to get a drink. And I think some of that though has to be given, like Dan Rush wrote it, he also directed it. It's a short story by a guy named Raymond, Raymond uh, Carver. But that's really, that was really, I thought a couple of times there, I thought, man, that is a well written scene. It, it really yeah. was. Well, and then there's some scenes, you know, I don't want to go too much in, in how the character goes, but there's some scenes where it becomes very much about his temptation. And, you know, I found myself really, really hoping he was going to find the strength to really, to not succumb to that temptation. Mm -hmm. And it was, and, and as I thought about it later, I thought, wow, that's a movie that really got me. Mm -hmm. He encounters a lot of other lonely people. Rebecca Hall, she's always very she's good. Lovely always, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, and, and the kid as well, but also there, one scene she's in, Laura Dern. Oh my and, God, yeah. so and, but, good in one scene, yes. But that last minute of that scene that they had together, I thought, 
that's just as good as you get. Yeah. Like, I mean, they when they if you finish that scene during a day, you got you shake each other's hands and we're like, <laughs> hey, we're professional actors. Nice yeah. job. We good. just kicked it out. We just we just knocked it out of the park. But the thing with all three of those connections, is that, like they could have been really mawkish, right? And right. they could have been really obvious, but they're dialed down. And so the thing with him and and Biggie's son is, is obviously like a father son connection there, but they don't overplay no. it. It's not heavy handed. The thing with him and Rebecca Hall across the street, she's this married pregnant photographer. Her husband's right. not around. Like that could have gone in directions that would be obvious, and it right. never does. I, right. I love that about it. Right, and and I like that this movie presents life as messy. Mm -hmm. You know, I initially didn't react well to that. I initially, you know, it, it's not a tidy movie. It doesn't, you know, you don't get things wrapped up in a nice, neat little package. It's messier than that. And I initially, I had a problem with that. And then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, no, you know what? That's true to the way these characters were, mm -hmm. and I really liked that about it. It could have used a uh, some sort of bathroom scene, I thought. <laughs> With the trying on dresses and shit all over themselves. Yeah. Um, it's a little languid, perhaps. It's my only yes. reservation with it. It's a little slow. Yeah, and maybe there's a couple of little metaphors that might be a tad obvious. Yep, yep, but... yep, yep. Yeah, there were a couple of moments where I was like, yeah, I got it. I got it. Point made. You didn't need to hit me yeah. over the head with it. And it is, despite the fact that there's some great moments in it, very great moments, great scenes and great performances, it was a little, there were moments when I was like, all right, come on. Like, just give me a little push, just a little, little quicker, uh, which keeps it, I think, just from being great. It's very good, though. Yes. All right, what do you have? Seven and a half. Solid. You're, you're, just, you're only off by one-tenth of one percent. Uh, <laughs> I give it an eight. An eight? You're too high. Um, <laughs> 7.4. four. We're all very much in the same ballpark. We all like this movie. We all like Bridesmaids. You check out our review of that as well. Overall, the grade here for Everything Must Go is a uh, 7.6. It's a hearty recommendation for that and for Bridesmaids. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.